and welcome along to the Property Academy podcast by Opus Partners. I'm your host, Seb Knight. And I'm Andrew Nichol. And today we're talking about the new mortgage rules, the DTIs that could stop you from buying a house or your next investment property. Now, these are coming in just confirmed from the 1st of July. And effectively, what they do is they cap the amount of mortgage debt, the amount of lending you can take out based on your income. So if you're buying a home for you personally to live in, then it is six times your uh, pre-tax or gross income that you can borrow if you're a property investor at seven times your income. On top of this, we're actually going to see some of the deposit rules change as well. Instead of needing a 35% deposit to buy an investment property, it's going to be a 30% deposit from now on. And there's going to be a little bit more low deposit lending going on with first home buyers and owner occupiers. Rules are still the same for new builds. So what I did was I spoke to a couple of mortgage advisors from around New Zealand just to get a sense of, well, what are the banks actually doing? How are they interpreting those rules just so that you guys can understand, well, what is going to happen or what could happen on the 1st of July when those rules change? But Andrew, how are investors kind of feeling about these new rules. Well, it's funny you said in a previous episode um, that you're noticing a lot of people asking, how many properties can I buy under the DTI rules? I'm not seeing that at all at the moment. So I'm not seeing a lot of extra questions around it. Um, Yes, there's a lot of stuff in the media at the moment. And I guess, you know, as a result, when there's a new rule comes in, everyone kind of panics a little bit. But I haven't had many of my investors ask about it. Okay, that's interesting. But I know you've seen some Stuff happening on the social oh, media. Oh, yeah, no, I hate this. On the so, Instagram. What I, <laughs> what I hate is when uh, a company takes changes and they make it out like this is a big panic, you need to buy a property now. Um, so, and buy a property now from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, what the I mean, do. I won't say their name because we've given enough stick to propeller, but um, they're putting up, you know, the DTI rules are coming in, you need to buy your investment property now because the rules will change and you won't be able to borrow. No, it won't make any impact at the start, which we'll get in. Too. Yeah, and there's also you know an important point, which is that new builds, which that specific company uh, sells, uh, those are exempt from the rules anyway. The rules won't have any impact. Yeah, so I'm seeing more scaremongering from people to sell properties rather than actual uh, people concerned about the rules having an impact. And just coming to that, the, the truth of the matter is that when the rules change on the 1st of July, we actually expect almost nothing to change. And the reason is because the limit is six to seven times your income, right? But at the moment, interest rates are so high and the banks are testing your mortgage applications at around 9% that most people are only borrowing at about five to five and a half times their income anyway. Yeah. So the limit's six to seven times your income, but most people are at five and a half times anyway because the interest rates are so high. Yeah, I had uh, um, Peter Norris from our uh, mortgage team actually was talking to one of my investors the other day and I said, what's a good rule of thumb? He said five times is, is pretty normal now. We're miles off. Yeah, and the thing is some people are going to get it wrong when the DTIs come in. So they're going to hear that, oh, cool, I can borrow six times or seven times my income. So they're going to take their income, multiply (laughs) it by six, multiply it by seven and say, that's what I am able to go and borrow from a bank. No, 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 that's the limit. But at the moment, interest rates are so high, you're not going to be able to get close to that limit for a lot of people. And we actually see that in the data as well, Andrew. Yeah, and if you look at how many buyers are actually borrowing at a high DTI level at the moment, first home buyers, less than 5%. Yeah. So less than 5% of buyers that are first home buyers are buying above the th- at a high threshold at the moment. And the important thing to remember is the limit is 20%. Yeah. Right? So up to 20% of home buyers are able to borrow at that really high limit. And we're currently at 5%. So I kind of think of it like the speed limit is 100 k's an hour. We're currently traveling, at least for first home buyers, at 25 k an hour. There is a lot of room for it to speed up. And the interesting thing to me is that first home buyers are the lowest category in terms of the percentage buying at high DTIs because we often think, oh, first home buyers, you know, they really struggle to get into houses. Yeah, they do with it, with deposits, but not with incomes. Yeah, it's quite fascinating because when you look at other home buyers, so people have been in the market for a while, you know, what percentage of them are purchasing at that high debt to income level? That's six and a half percent. And investors, okay, you'd imagine investors, they've got a whole lot of debt. They're going to be a really high percentage. Well, they're actually only 8.8%. So yeah, the highest group, but not significantly higher. And the big question that we've always asked though is, but how are the banks going to interpret it? Because we've got this data 
We know what the rules are. So we know where we're at. And we're like, well, we're well below the rules. Nothing is going to change on the 1st of July. But we've always said the big unknown is what is ANZ going to do? What's BNZ going to do? You know, how are the Kiwi Bank data nerds who are looking at bank policy, how are they going to interpret this? And what is their behavior going to be? Because I remember you always saying that back when the LVR, the deposit rules came in, you know, the banks were well below them, but they pulled the reins back when it well, came they to panic. the dig anyway. Yeah, they panic. They panic a little bit. And all of a sudden, people are scrutinizing applications more to making sure that they don't uh, uh, breach their agreement with the Reserve Bank. Yeah, and so the interesting thing was we called up the five major banks in New Zealand to say, well, how are you guys going to react? And what's interesting is ANZ and Kiwi Bank, they said that they're not currently applying DTIs at all for any of their lending. I think ASB had done a little bit. They have been considering the DTI, the debt-to-income ratio, for the last couple of years. But what's interesting is ANZ, Kiwi Bank and Westpac, they all said that they either don't expect anything to change or that most mortgage applications won't see a change at all. Uh, so just for example, ANZ said no, when it comes to uh, the change on the 1st of July, don't expect anything. They basically said exactly what we said. Interest rates mean that borrowers, they can't really take out a big mortgage anyway. Uh, and so they expect the majority of lending that's currently going on to be within those limits. Uh, same, Kiwi Bank said applicants shouldn't notice a difference. Um, some people might have to provide some more information to prove their income. So you might need to give more info to the bank, but actually probably not going to see much of a difference. Uh, same with Westpac, they said most people aren't going to see a difference. So it's quite nice, actually, quite comforting, I think, for most of us as we're sitting here before the DTI rules coming in, saying, sweet, nothing should change. But the big unknown is the banks, and the banks saying, nah, we should be okay. Yeah, and I, I spoke to Elise Peters from the Mortgage Girls, who's a mortgage broker, and she said that the banks have been looking at these DTIs for a while now, so they're kind of fam it's familiar territory. It hasn't all of a sudden come in, and uh, because of that, she doesn't expect much in the way of changes. However, the one thing she has noticed is exactly what you said before. Banks are asking for a bit more detail around extra income. So your commissions, for example, or your bonus structure, they're really digging into that, the, the supplement income. And then the other thing I've been getting a lot of questions about is new builds, because of course new builds are exempt from these rules. And people are saying to me, Ed, but how does it actually work? Is it that I go and I buy a new build and I take out a, $600,000 mortgage, and then when I go and apply for a loan for something else, that $600,000 doesn't count. I'll tell you what my interpretation of the rules are from reading them and talking to mortgage brokers. So there are three tests that you've got to pass when you go and apply for a mortgage. There's the deposit test, which we call LVR, loan to value ratio. There's an affordability test. Can you actually afford the mortgage? That's what we call UMI or uncommitted monthly income. And now we've got this new test, which is do you have, how big is the debt compared to your income, the DTI test? And so if you go and buy a home for yourself or an existing investment property, one that you just go buy off the street, those properties, you'll have to pass all three of those tests. Is there enough deposit? Can you afford the mortgage? How much is the debt you have compared to the income? When you go and buy a new build, only two of those tests apply. Yep, you're still going to be able to afford the mortgage and you still need enough deposit, but you don't have this consideration about debt to income ratios. Now, if I do that and then I decide, right, I also want to add a, 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 a an increase to my mortgage to go and buy a boat. Now, when I go and buy that boat, I still have to pass all three tests, right? Well, that's the thing. So when you go and buy the, it, it, the test is done at the time you take out the lending. And the question is, what's the purpose of the lending? So if you want to borrow against your own home to go and buy a new built investment property, you're borrowing against your own home, but the purpose of the lending is to go and buy a new build. So that would be exempt from the rules. But if you go and buy the new build property, take out a lot of debt, and then you say you want to go and buy the boat, well, what's the purpose of the lending? The purpose is to go and buy a boat. And so the new build debt now counts because that is still debt that you are legally responsible for. And so this is where people are going to have to be a bit more strategic and work with a mortgage broker to make sure the timing of their applications are correct. So for example, if I wanted to do that, those two things, maybe I'd set up a revolving credit to buy my boat now, which I'd have to meet the tests, all three tests, and then I'd buy the rental property, the new build investment property, because that's exempt. Yeah, that's actually a really good example because you can afford the boat right now. You will be within the DTI restrictions for the boat right now, but if you buy the new build first and then try and do it, you might get, get the no. And so you are going to have to be quite strategic. 
Uh, and I, I know that that's kind of, you know, here at Opus, we obviously recommend new builds to people. Um, so we've got an incentive not to tell you that. Uh, but I think it's really important to be upfront about, you know, what these rules can also mean. Because let's say that you're in a position like myself, right? I want to go and buy my own home pretty soon. Oh, yeah. So as a rent vista, this could really have an impact. Yeah. So I don't want to go up and load up on new build debt because I need to go and buy my own home first. That's going to be within the DTI rules. Once I've got that, that's when I can say, okay, I'm going to buy a whole heap of new builds. Now, what I do need to be clear about is, as I said right now, the debt-to-income ratio rules are non-binding. So what that means is they don't really have an effect because the maximum amount of debt you can take out is kind of 5.5 times your income, five times your income anyway. So right now, I don't really have to think about that. But if interest rates were a bit lower and more people are taking out high DTI debt, then that would be more of a consideration at that point. So, so before we actually have an impact or we feel the impact of these DTI rules coming in, we're going to have to see much lower interest rates than we see today. Yeah, and that's probably going to be about two 18 years 18 months, away. yeah, two years. Yeah, 18 months, two years away. So, Andrew, what can people, what are investors or homeowners, what can they expect to see different on the 1st of July. So you're not going to see much change, but what you will see is that the LVR restrictions are going to loosen a little bit. So if you're buying existing rental properties, right now you need a 35% deposit. That's going to change to a 30% deposit, which I know is only a small amount of difference, 5%, but it makes a real difference. If you've got a big rental portfolio at the moment, it's an extra 5% against all those rental properties as well as a less deposit on the property you're about to buy. And it's quite interesting to say, well, who's actually going to be impacted by these rules? And it's probably not the people that you think. So, you know, we talked about on a couple of episodes ago, it's the, it's the bigger investors, people who own a lot of properties already, who are really going to be constrained by these new rules because they've got so much debt. The other people are people with big student loans, is who I'm really thinking about. Because if you're a doctor or you're a lawyer or a surgeon, somebody who's gone and they've taken out massive, uh, big, big, big student loans, all of that debt counts. Uh, yeah. So if you've got a 100K student loan and you're trying to go get a mortgage, that 100K student loan actually counts towards your debt calculation. Mm. So those are people who are going to be impacted because it's all of the debt uh, that you are legally responsible for that counts in your app. Uh, in your application. Right, let's wrap it up there, but please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Really does help us get the message out to more people. And hey, if you're listening to this on your podcast app, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen, and you want to see our, I was going to say pretty faces, but they're not pretty. If you want to see our faces and see some of the graphs we're sharing, you can always watch this on YouTube as well. Just Google Opus Partners YouTube. It'll be the first thing that comes up. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We release new videos on here every Monday and Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the Property Academy podcast. I'm your host, Steve McKnight. And I'm Andrew Nichol. We're going to be back again tomorrow with even more daily strategies, tactics, and insights to help you get the most out of the New Zealand property market. Until next time.